From ifyouonlynews.com, Supreme Court rules you have no Fourth Amendment rights if cops don't know the law. This is from January 1st, but it has lasting legal implications. And, you know, the best literature tells us what we already know, right? Well, in this case, the, the great bullshit fiction to come out of the Supreme Court reaffirms what we already know is legal precedent in America. If a cop says, whoops, I didn't know the law, or if the cop says, well, hey, I, I felt threatened, or if the cop just, you know, screws up and kills somebody because he lost his cool, well, hey, you yeah, know, he'll get a paid vacation. Administrative leave, I think is what they call it. So now we see it clearly in black and white. The emperor has no clothes, and the Supreme Court finally had to come down and say, nope, this is, this is, this is the law, this is the Constitution. In a travesty of justice that furthers the cause of police being able to do whatever they want, the Supreme Court has ruled that your Fourth Amendment rights don't matter if the cops are ignorant. In an eight to one decision, in the case of Hyen versus North Carolina, SCOTUS, Supreme Court of the United States, ruled that a violation of the Fourth Amendment is perfectly acceptable if the violation results from, quote, a reasonable mistake about the law on the part of police. Now, what's a reasonable mistake about the law? I mean, the law is an excuse that the cops take, or what the cops take is an excuse to do violence against peaceful people. You would think before doing that, there would have to be some specific knowledge of justification for using violence against someone. At least an understanding of the excuses laid out by government. Now the government says, no, you don't even need to understand what excuses we've come up with for you cops. You can just make mistakes. Now, a reasonable mistake about the law should lead to a cop saying, well, I guess I'm going to back off then. Hey, if I don't know the law, no one's being threatened. You know, that's, if, that's, if I'm not stopping a, a crime in progress or something that's an immediate threat to someone's life and limb, I'm going to stop. I'm going to respect people's rights. But that's not how the police work in America or really anywhere. What constitutes a reasonable mistake? Whatever the police say constitutes a reasonable mistake. Quote, Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't aware that you're allowed to have an inspection sticker on your side window on cars with a polymer windshield when I pulled you over and illegally searched your private property. Or, as the case before the court cited, an officer pulled a man over when a brake light flickered and then turned on, believing state law required two working lights when, in fact, it only requires one. <sighs> this is martial law. That's it. We live in a state of absolute martial law. There's, there, like, it, it's in black and white now. It is by the arbitrary whims of the police. And I say that not because of what this says in black and white. I'm saying that because of the implication here. It means that an officer can do something illegal, completely illegal. And all they have to do to get away with it is convince someone, and this is if, if, it were to ever go to a jury trial, if even a cop were to ever be indicted, if all of those other hurdles were cleared. The government says now, if the jury is convinced, this is the precedent. So now you have a lot of people who aren't paying attention to this right now, who aren't hearing my voice, who don't understand these issues, who are going to be called to a jury. We're going to get a summons for jury duty because they're good little registered voters. And they're going to go, and if, if, if that cop is on the stand and, and people are going, hey, you know, well, Darren Wilson or uh, Officer Pantaleo in New York, you know, well, he made a mistake. And the judge is going to get to come down and say, and the defense attorney is going to get to come down and say to the jury, if you believe that this officer made an honest mistake in killing this man, in choking this guy, in stealing this property, then you have to vote not guilty. And there's no other mechanism for accountability. They're not going to be held liable in a civil case for damages. That doesn't work. They're not going to be held accountable for, for actually breaking the law and hurting people. No. If you 
wear a badge in this country. It means that everyone around you who's not wearing a badge is subject to your subjective whim. You can do whatever you want to them. That's martial law. Rule by arbitrary decree from moment to moment. Whatever the cops feel like is the law of the land. A police officer, not knowing the traffic laws he sent out to enforce, can now pull you over, say, oops, I didn't know, and then legally search your vehicle. Now, you know, legally, being in quotes, according to the Supreme Court. And, and I, I just want to point out what the Supreme Court really is that most, most people don't understand. I mean, it, and it's, it's funny to hear people who, who claim to understand that government isn't what it seems go, oh yeah, and the Supreme Court, they're, they're our last line of defense. They're the ones that protect us from unconstitutional laws and make sure that the laws fit within the bounds of the Constitution. <laughs> How's that been going for the last couple hundred years for you? Seriously, just think about it for a second. If you were the framers of the Constitution, those enemies of freedom who wanted to create a stronger central government and you wanted to convince people like Patrick Henry who didn't want a strong central government give me liberty or give me death remember you would say oh hey hey it's okay we've got a bill of rights and to interpret the bill of rights in the constitution we've got a supreme court that will be impartial they'll be appointed for life they'll have no conflict of interest whatsoever yeah and then we got a bridge to sell you now if you believe this it really kind of flies in the face of just everything the Supreme Court has done, authorizing from nearly its very beginning all sorts of government fuckery. And now to the point where it, they're, they're saying, oh no, the, 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 the Fourth Amendment, that thing that says like pretty clearly in black and white you're protected from unreasonable search and seizures. Yeah, if it's by, by accident, <laughs> the moral principles don't apply. There's no accountability there. And what there should be is, is, is criminal accountability. If a cop hurts someone, they should be liable. You know, if, if, if a police officer, and, and I know this is um, getting into, I guess, uh, a sort of in-between fantasy lanks. I think it's more likely that we will abolish uh, institutionalized violence known as government before we get to this point. Uh, because, <laughs> you know, if, if cops were really held responsible for their actions, nobody would become cops. Think about it. If, if a cop, I mean, I've, I've been injured by cops multiple times. Go back to the Jefferson dance party. I was, I was picked up and body slammed on marble and, you know, choke slammed. Now, in that case, I went to the hospital the next day. I had bumps and bruises. You know, I had been in jail for a few hours, emotional distress, blah, 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 right? But let, let's say, like, I, I didn't know how to tuck my chin and slap the ground from, you know, military martial arts training, and I'd snap my head back and crack my skull and got into a coma for six months and come out with uh, six months of lost time in a giant hospital bill. Being government means never having to say you're sorry. And even if I had won a case in that, in that case for uh, a civil suit against an officer involved, the officer wouldn't pay for it, the taxpayers would pay for it. So already from the beginning, you have this setup where if you're a cop, hey, even if I do get in trouble, even if I do lose my job, even if I kill someone by accident because oh, I felt threatened, hey, I'm not really going to be held responsible for it. I'm not going to have to go to jail and spend the rest of my life working to pay off a debt that's so high because I've really screwed with someone's life. No, the taxpayers are on the hook for that. Yeah, we'll just send some of my buddies in the IRS to go steal a little bit more from them and then pay off this one victim and the system keeps rolling on. So, now... There was one lone dissent. Justice Sonia Sotomayor said, quote, that this ruling means further eroding the Fourth Amendment's protection of civil liberties in a context where that protection has already been worn down. Oh, really? So she admits, now think about this, implicitly in the statement that the Supreme Court is bullshit. The Supreme Court that we can rely on to protect our Fourth Amendment rights is actually allowed that protection to be already worn down. Where does it stop? We've already seen the cops tend to shoot first and ask questions later if they believe a perpetrator has a weapon. They can use terms like made a sudden move or appear to be reaching for something and they suffer no consequences. Now, they don't even have to prove justification. They only need to prove they're not qualified to do their job because they don't 